Oh, hello there. How did you get in my house? Never mind that. Come sit with me. Do we all remember how great 2020 was? Amongst all the political drama, there was one star event that took the world by storm. Literally. That's right, I'm talking about the COVID-19 pandemic. But let's not dwell on the past. Thanks to the distribution of mRNA vaccines, the world has been able to get back up and running to a somewhat normal standard by 2022. But with all the chaos settled, what is left in store for mRNA vaccines? Are they still useful today? What other ways can we implement mRNA technology into our status quo? Why are you asking so many questions? Hello there! Before we can handle the topic of mRNA technology, we need to tackle the root of the subject. What exactly is mRNA? If you've taken Biology 30 last semester, you should have a good understanding of what mRNA is. But to recap, messenger ribonucleic acid is one of the many types of RNA molecules in the human body. This specific RNA acts as an instructor to other parts of the cell. In the body, DNA is like this large instruction manual, or library, filled to the brim with instructions for anything in the body, from our skin color to the digestive enzymes in our stomach. mRNA is responsible for reading the parts of the DNA, and then messaging the cell factories, ribosomes, on what proteins need to be made. During the pandemic, many were pretty skeptical about how quickly the vaccines against COVID-19 were developed and people began to wonder if said vaccines were rushed out to the public. But the reality is that there is no such thing as overnight success, and it took years to develop this technology. Let's discuss the history of mRNA vaccines. The year was 1990, and the first ever mRNA vaccine for the flu was tested on mice. This sparked a lot of enthusiasm to continue the development of this technology, but there were still a lot of hurdles the scientists faced. Their main concern was when their synthetic mRNA would enter the body, the molecule would degrade too quickly for it to deliver the message and be read into proteins in the cell. With this in mind, they turned to the science community for solutions. They found one scientist study of lipids that could aid in their problem. In these studies, it is found that the lipids were insoluble. That meant they could utilize nanotechnology to wrap a lipid bubble around the mRNA like a shield, protecting the mRNA from degrading too quickly. This allows for the mRNA to reach the cell and deliver the message to the ribosome safely. Once inside the cell, the synthetic mRNA can instruct the cells to translate the specific proteins as usual. As seen in this diagram, the ribosome is translating the info on the mRNA into COVID-19 signature spikes. This will trigger the immune system to fight the anomaly, which will imprint the image of COVID-19 spikes into your immune system. So you'll be able to fight the real disease in case you get attacked. Hi, Bill Schiff here for mRNA vaccines a technology to prepare your immune system for attacks against diseases. The cost of producing these vaccines average around 127.1 million for P Pfizer's BioNTech and 270 million for Moderna's Spike Vax. But thankfully, you can access these vaccines in Canada, free of charge. Now you can go to the majority of any pharmacy and book a vaccine shot today. Though this technology is available worldwide, it may not be free for every country. An example would be in America, with Moderna being $15 USD per dose. This technology has been proven to be safe by many citizens, but there are still some risks, including myocarditis, pericarditis, anaphylaxis. However, these only happen to a sparing amount of people. Get shot today! After taking a shot of an mRNA vaccine, you may suffer from a few side effects such as chills, mild fever, fatigue, muscle aches, joint pain, and headaches. Here are a few ways to reduce these side effects. 1. Do not do any strenuous activities or lift heavy objects. Overworking your body, especially in the area where you got the shot, will increase the risk of injury. 2. Drink a lot of water. 
to improve your overall immune function, since water helps our body work efficiently, which makes vaccine side effects more manageable. 3. Get a good amount of rest. It takes a lot of energy for the body to adjust to the vaccine shot, so you need to give your body a good amount of time to recover. Now back to your regular video schedule. Hey man, you rang? Are you watching videos about mRNA technology? Um, yeah. They're pretty fun to watch, and informative as well. Well, don't you want to discuss the emotional and social impacts of this tech? What? Why? Check the sports med document, dummy! Oh, right. Well, one of the most controversial topics that came with the vaccinations and the pandemic was requiring vaccination by law. There are a lot of people who choose not to get vaccinated, and now that's required by law, some of them can't go do their jobs or go to school without having to go against their own beliefs slash choices. That's why many people perceive the vaccine requirement as something that goes against their fundamental freedoms. Another issue that would arise is the use of fetal cell lines in the development of these vaccines. In order to get the information needed for the vaccine from the virus, scientists will grow these viruses in fetal stem cells and extract the info from there. This is seen as morally wrong because these cells come from abortion-derived cells. You're right. Many companies do use fetal cells to pursue their vaccines, an example being the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. But these cells are not used in the production of mRNA vaccines. However, these fetal cells were used during the developing slash testing stages of mRNA vaccines. So people will still see these vaccines as morally unacceptable. That makes sense. Well, thank you for joining us for this segment, Blockhead. My name is Greg. Uh, okay, bye. And thank you all very much for watching.